Blackbusters. What's cracking, family? It's your boy, Big Job Man, and we here with another episode of Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. Man. Hey, man, like I said, I'm Big Job Man, along with my co-host. Hot Take Tone today. Hot Take Tone. Oh, yeah. shit. No no other, like, aliases. No, this straight to the point. Hot Take Tone. It's a Hot Take Tone today. Yes. Hey, so y'all know when, hot, when, when Tone is hot taking, mm-hmm. uh, his takes be steaming hot, bro. We got some real questions yeah. to answer here, Ja. Like some not, real oh. questions to answer uh, uh, about this about this film, about other movies like it. Okay. I got a lot of questions. I got a lot I of feel takes. Like this is a genre, a subgenre that people don't talk about. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, family. Uh we getting straight to it, man. We talking about nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nothing to Lose, starring Martin Lawrence and yeah. Tim Robbins. Good pairing. Uh, good pairing. Good pairing. Yeah, and here's the thing. Before this movie, the movie came out in 97. Mm-hmm. Before this movie, would you have thought that Martin Lawrence and Tim Robbins would do a film together? No. Nah. Like this. Not like Low this. Low-key buddy, like a buddy film. Definitely a buddy, a buddy yeah, film. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, not, not even, not, not even low-key, mm-hmm. uh, high-key. Yeah. Uh, Martin Lawrence plays Terrence Paul Davidson. Tim Robbins plays Nick Beam. Um, Tim Robbins is this big, high, high executive yeah. marketing guy. 97 marketing guy. 97. <laughs> picture this like he does marketing for big time commercials and mm-hmm. magazines and stuff like that. Yeah. He makes good paper. Yeah. Right. And he's like top of the food chain. He might have one boss. But his boss is a, is a, is a real dick. Yeah. A douchebag type douche dude. Douchebag yeah. kind of boss. A goober bag type guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, means well, but he's still kind of like weirdo. Yeah. You know like, what I'm like, like the 90s used to have the asshole boss. Yeah. Either like male or female. The kind of like you never see portrayed today. Like HR, lawsuits. Yeah. We're a very litigious society yeah. now. But back then it could be super douchey. They leave you, uh, well, you're about to leave a work to go home yeah. and he'll pull up <laughs> and throw a stack of papers on yeah. you. Overtime tonight. Yeah. I need these on my desk by tomorrow morning. I need it in the morning. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? It's the weekend. Yeah. yeah. You got to have to work all through the weekend. Mm-hmm. He's and that type of guy. That type of guy. But like with a, like a, like throw the, the work at you and but then give you like thank God for you in the yeah, team, right? You know like, what team player yeah, you. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going to school. That guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Aspen. So right. this weekend you need to take my load. Right, pause. right, right. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there real quick. Um also you got John C. McNeely. Uh, mm-hmm. He plays Davis Big, Davis Rick Lanlo, and Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, man, Charlie Dunn. Always Giancarlo, bro. Has there ever been a bad role? I don't think I've ever seen him play a bad. And we've seen him play Do everything. So many different types of characters. Extremely. I, I will. I want to say he's underrated, but I see him. He's been. He's been. He's been working for forty years. I mean, uh, maybe thirty to forty years. He's so good. He could still be underrated. Yeah, because still, because yeah. people don't always bring him up when they talk mm-hmm. about some of the great actors, right? right. Like you know, we're oh, Denzel and you know Lawrence Will Fishburne, Smith and Lawrence Fishburne, Tom like, Cruise, and this the, man been working with different characters. Yes, from like Gus Fring Come and on. like and like uh, uh, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad. He's played gangsters. He's, He's played gangsters. Played uh, businessman, business dude. He's played, you know, Islanders, Corp- I, yeah, corporate, everything. Caribbean. Yeah, man, yeah. He, he does everything, man. Uh, shout out to brother, uh, brother Exp- Esposito. Mm-hmm. Um, he plays a villain in this film. So I was saying, I'm not gonna give you the whole movie, mm-hmm. but I'll just break it down to like Tim Tim Robbins' character. He's like a high exec um, that has to. Uh, he goes home early. Uh, to um, surprise his wife. Yeah, he's going. They're going on some date. Right? He's, he's supposed to. The boss hits him with the, I need you to stay late. Yeah. So he thinks he has to stay late. Right. But the dinner cancels. Right. And he gets to, he gets to go home early flowers. with the flowers and the whole night. They about to have a good weekend, mm-hmm. man. I, I'm about to go home, surprise my lady. I'm home early. Yep. Let's go get, go, go, go get dinner, come back, and, and you know do the thing. Uh, he gets to the house early, and he hears some moaning from upstairs. And he goes upstairs and sees her and peeks through the bedroom door mm-hmm. and sees his wife riding pipe. Riding man. it well. Riding it well, man. Riding it well. Yeah, <laughs> man. She was doing her thing. It was crucial, bro. Well. And um, him being the buster that he is, mm-hmm. he just sat there and watched for a little bit and walked away stunned. Yeah. And then he saw some cufflinks 
on the counter. Oh. You know, when you, I guess, you know, when you're about to get a cracker, you start mm-hmm. taking off your clothes and mm-hmm. stuff. So this is a mm-hmm. businessman. He had cufflinks on. And the cufflinks say PB on the cufflinks. Matching the initials of his boss. And his boss, his initials are PB. His yep. nickname is PB. Yep. And so he's like, damn, my wife is cheating on me with my boss. The guy that just told me to work late. Mm-hmm. This nigga knows my family. Yeah. He's a friend of the family. He, uh, and he's smashing my wife and my wife letting him. Yeah. And so now he's heartbroken. He's shocked. He's kind of, he don't even know what to do. Man. He starts driving in traffic at 30 miles an hour. Just high, in on, a on, the, on the freeway. Just in a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I ever seen this movie called Falling Down, it reminds me a lot of Falling yeah, Down. Yeah, yeah, Michael Douglas. It was yes, a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, it's not a blockbuster, but it's a great film. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's basically about a man. In this case, Tim Robbins. He his whole his whole life is over now. Yeah, you know his, his the love of his life is is cheating on him, and he's heartbroken, and and he just don't know what to do. And I mean, he's got beautiful home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. for for the nineties, he had a nice whip for ninety seven. Yeah, he had a what? A, a, a suburban? <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's GMC a or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but a nice whip for ninety seven. Yeah, a big truck. Yeah, yeah. job. You know, uh-huh. everything. But he had the little lady, the receptionist, the little that worked at the flower shop. Mm-hmm. Baddie, is, is that the? Uh, that's not, that's, that's uh, the Noxzema Noxzema girl? girl. The Noxzema girl. I forget her name. Yeah. She, she, she's in here. Rebecca Gayhart. Yeah, Rebecca Gayhart played shit. Danielle. Memorized. You knew her. You remember her she name? She is on my. My white girl Mount Rushmore, okay, for the nineties. As she should be, like Topanga's Man. on mine. You know what I'm Topanga's saying? Topanga's a good one. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? But baby girl, baby uh, yeah. Rebecca, uh, yeah, Gayhart plays Danielle, and she works downstairs in the lobby of the big corporate building mm-hmm. that Tim Robbins is uh, is a uh, part of, and she sells flowers. Yeah. She's like a florist. Yeah. So and she first with him every chance. She, every chance mm-hmm. she gets, she's like on him. So he's like a dude. Young, older guy, probably like in his late thirties, early forties. Yeah, late thirties, early forties. Um, young chicks in their twenties is, uh, is after mm-hmm. him. He's making paper. He's driving a big truck, yeah. and he's not flashy. He's a, he's not flashy. He's a like a kind of just a regular Joe living his best life. Yeah, you know his his, his coworkers like him. Mm-hmm. He's he's a nice guy. Even when he even when you present to him and it's not a good presentation, he'll yeah. let you down easy. Yeah, he's just a good dude. Criticism. Just a, yeah. just a, a a good dude. Yeah. A square bear, nice guy. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. He can do no wrong at this point. He finds out his wife is cheating on him, and he goes off into traffic, and he's just driving crazy. Um, He's just driving. He's just driving. He doesn't even have a destination. He's just driving. So one day he pulls up to one, not one not one day, but he pulls up into uh, a, a red light, and mm-hmm. then in comes out the blue, opens the door, and jumps in the car. Martin Lawrence's character, Terrence Paul Davidson, yep. with a gun. Mm-hmm. Puts a gun to his head and it says, "Bro, uh, it's a stick up." Yeah, yeah. You made your cash, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so at this point, Tim Robbins, I, I, like I said, his life is over at this point. He literally has he's nothing not, to lose. He's so nothing to lose. Hence, the, hence the, the title. Yep. Uh, he doesn't care about life right now. Mm-hmm. He's he, he's too upset about what's going on in his life right now to even be scared. Yeah. So he smashes on the gas. And driving, start driving crazy, nuts. Yeah, probably going like eighty five in the forty five <laughs> zone. Probably going a hundred, uh huh, hundred and eight. Yep. In the in the on the freeway, and yep. Martin Lawrence is like crazy. He's scared. They're like, slow down, nigga. This is good work by Martin, though. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, they they do a good job of establishing that Martin isn't a very good criminal. Criminal, a uh, jacker. Yeah, he's yeah. not very good at it. Mm-hmm. Um. By the fact of how things, you know, hand, you know how handles it. Tim Robbins' character don't give a fuck. He throws wallet out the window. Give me a wallet. He takes his wallet. Mm-hmm. He's so upset about life. When Martin says, "Give me a wallet," he takes his wallet and throws it out the window. Yeah, and his cell phone. Yeah, takes those just it. just done. Yeah, and they push all the way to Arizona from from L.A. <laughs> from Los Angeles. Yeah, he's driving crazy. He's driving so fast. That there's no time to hop out the car and, yeah. and, and and vacate or retreat. So Martin Lawrence is basically held hostage. Yeah, they stuck. They stuck in the car together. They stuck. Hey man, slow down. He's just driving down yeah. the highway, probably down the ten. Yeah, the ten freeway, just smashing. Stuck and stuck. And so uh, I think he finally has to uh, get gas. Do they have to get gas, or does yeah. he just run out of like whatever was in his? Spirit to keep driving, to just ran out, uh-huh. and they maybe end up at the diner. Yeah, and you know, but I like the way it. I like the way it opens, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, the diner scene is is great because they end up at the diner. 
You know, they they order some food. By this time, they have rapport. And, oddly and, and, enough, and, 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 at this time, Martin is trapped. Yeah, he's in a whole other state with this random dude that he tried mm-hmm. to jack. And now Tim is still in shock. He's still like, I don't give, a, I don't give a damn about nothing. Yeah. Um. And and Martin Lawrence's character had to shot him yet, so he knows. Okay, this guy's not going to shoot me. Mm-hmm. So um. I'm just here. Yeah. So they end up uh, fighting. They fought before the diner, right? They fought in the car. Yeah. I want to say that they fought. They fight. They fought in the car. They fought outside the truck. Yeah. And then I think that's when when Tim Robbins hit him with the yeah 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 yeah. the the, the wrestling movie (laughs) elbow. It worked too though. It fucked him up. Um, then they went inside the diner mm-hmm. when they sat and had like breakfast or lunch, and that's when they kind of got to know each other. Yeah. So, um, he's uh basically judging them. Tim Robbins' character. I don't know why they're sitting at this point. Obviously, it's a movie, but yeah, they like they 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 just spent four hours driving together. They at least sit down and have lunch or breakfast or whatever it is, and um, this dude is pissed off. Tim Robbins is like you, you are uh, you are disgraced. Mm-hmm. To the human race, you yep. a robber, yep. parasite, and, yeah, parasite, oh, oh, nine. And, and of course, Mark Lawrence is uh, he's like, me, you don't, you don't, don't judge me, you don't know me, you don't know what I've been through in my life. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, well, how, how, how bad is it because you from the hood or something? And yeah, and Tim Robbins has his own perspective of who Martin is, and Martin has his own perspective of who, who Tim is. Tim mm-hmm. is a white guy with nice suit, leisure suit, mm-hmm. um, nice big truck. Yep. Oh, you probably working in downtown LA mm-hmm. and making good paper. Yep, you don't know my life. So judging judge each other me. right yeah, off the bat. Judge right. each other off, off right, right off the bat. Um and that's and they, they they start to learn about each other, basically. Tim Robbins explains why they are where they are, mm-hmm. you know, explains what happened, you know, went mm-hmm. home and such and such and such. Martin gives a great speech of like in, in classic Martin about mm-hmm. what he would have said and da 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 da. And that for some reason like just Triggers Tim Robbins again, and they get to scrap it again. So it's showing you that this dude, Tim Robbins, who typically would be like, he's from the suburbs. Mm-hmm. He's probably afraid of, if you don't have black friends, he probably got one black friend, yes. a token black guy in his crew. And it's probably uh, one of them, like, you know, Tom dudes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he would normally be scared of like someone like Martin, but he's so fed up about life right now yeah. that he's angry. He's so angry that he's getting back at Martin. They fight and he's punching them in the face yeah. and all that. And at this point, they kind of need each other because Tim Robbins doesn't have his wallet, so he doesn't have any cash. Right. Right? Like, you know, Martin's got a little bit of cash mm-hmm. to pay for. Right. So it's almost kind of like they're just kind of like bonded until they can get back to yeah. L.A. Yeah. This brings my first hot take Mm-hmm. Regarding this movie. Yeah. Ja, I'm not a hundred percent sure this is a blackbuster. Okay. Here's the thing. I like that he said that. Mm-hmm. Because I, I thought about this too. It's a blackbuster. Let me tell you why. Okay. You make um, your case for, I'll make uh, the case against. If you listen to the music, mm-hmm. it's black music. Yeah. Um, hip hop. Um from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's blues in there. There's uh, some oldies in there. Mm-hmm. And it's black. The soundtrack is black. Yeah. It's a black film. And Martin, I know Tim Robbins is white, right? I know it was written by a white guy. Speaking of the, speaking of the guy, it was written by Steve Oderkirk. Mm-hmm. Written and directed by Steve Oderkirk. Um, and I get why you say it might not be a blackbuster, but I believe it is mm-hmm. because... Martin is so black. And this goes back to He's like, so black. When we were first thinking about this podcast, when we were, you mm-hmm. know, starting and talking about it, and we were trying to like figure out the criteria. What's the criteria for, you know, a blackbuster? And we kind of, you know, we remember we were like, well, is this movie a blackbuster or is this movie a blackbuster? So in this one, you got Martin who is doing all the classic Martin stuff, mm-hmm. right? fantastic performance by Martin from end to end. He's really good at this. Mm -hmm. And even, like, in some cases has dialed it back from, like, the true Martin. He Mm -hmm. does a lot of, like, really good subtle shit here. Right. But this movie is about a white guy. It's about a white guy's life, a white guy's marriage, a white guy's job, a white guy's boss, a white guy who kind of collides with this black guy. But ultimately... Everything kind of circles around this white man and and what's going on with with his life. 
things resolve for the white man. And then at the end, he kind of like shows up and he's kind of formed this bond and kinship with, with the black guy. So I was asking myself, in a film that's not centered on blackness, even though it has a black co-star, might have some some black music, but it's fundamentally set in the white world, can that still be a blackbuster? What's interesting, I'll give you a, 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 a contrast. So we did Money Talks. Mm -hmm. Now, Money Talks is blacker than Nothing to Lose, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, and so... A little bit more. A little bit more, right? Like, you know, but it's still the same kind of thing, right? Like, you know, I think you could probably argue that Money Talks is about Chris Tucker's character, mm -hmm. you know, as, 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 the, as the key character and Charlie Sheen and what's kind of popping with him as the side piece. But... But it's interesting because, like, if nothing to lose isn't a blackbuster, then can Money Talks be a blackbuster? Right. And this is why I put nothing to lose in there as a blackbuster because of Money Talks mm -hmm. and because of 48 Hours. So you think 48 Hours is a blackbuster? Here's the thing. Do you... I feel like these two... I feel like the, 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 art, the actors in it... Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy is the epitome of black. So when you mm -hmm. so when you put Eddie Murphy in the movie, so just it's automatically it, it's automatically a black. Buster. So that's why you put Eddie Murphy in the film. You yeah. can have Eddie Murphy could be the only white person in the film, the only black person in the film, but the black people are going to go see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Martin, black people are black people are going to go see it. Yeah. You know, um, I think they purposely made those type of movies to get both. Both races together. Yeah, you know, forty eight hours, another forty eight hours. Beverly Hills Cop, mm -hmm. black guy with the with the uh, like a buddy cop film with black yeah. guy and the and the white boys. And same thing here. Money talks, black guy, white. So we got to get a black guy in there. Mm -hmm. Money. Here's the thing: if if Rush Hour was um, see the Rush, Rush, Rush Hour is a great question. Yeah, it's a well, we haven't done that yet, yeah. but we will. Because here's like what I was thinking to piggyback off what you're saying. I think what you're saying is absolutely right, and I think it's a good criteria for like what makes something a blockbuster. What I was like flirting with was was that let's just say it's one black character in a movie surrounded by like others. Mm -hmm. As long as the as long as the story is about the black guy or the black woman then that makes it a blackbuster. But if the story is about somebody else fundamentally, does the sheer presence of that black character mm -hmm. make it a blackbuster, right? So I'll give you a couple of examples. Beverly Hills Cop is the story of Axel Foley. The movie is about Axel's story. Mm -hmm. To me, that makes it a blackbuster. I think 48 Hours is about um, Eddie Nick Ray. I think it's about Eddie Murphy. Nick not like Nick Nolte is the cop, but Eddie Murphy is is the key component. Mm -hmm. Like he knows the, the guys he's out. Da, 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 da. I think it's an Eddie Murphy movie, kind of like maybe hybrid little gray area. Trading places is not really, but Eddie Murphy kind of steals the show. So you have all of these different examples, like Money Talks, right? I think Money Talks, I think the story is about Chris Tucker. And nothing to lose. I feel like the story is about Tim Robbins. Martin is there and he's awesome, but is that enough to make nothing to lose a blockbuster? Um, <clears throat> I think so. I think like like you, it, it, you it, get you get you know I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I I just feel like money talks and and nothing to lose are in the same lane. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we know we've seen um, we've seen uh, Chris Tucker's family, not family. You see his wife. Mm -hmm. We go to his house. And um, but uh, Martin's family. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. In both movies, and when Money Talks, yeah. we see the, he goes to the hood to see his homeboy, his partner, mm -hmm. they, and he gets the guns from his homeboys and his. You know what I'm saying, and he goes back to his house. Yeah. What other hood spots outside of the car wash? Mm -hmm. It's three, three, three locations. Yeah. Where is where, where he's? But outside of that, he's mm -hmm. at the he's in the he's at the mansion. Mm -hmm. He's at the auction. You know what I'm saying? Same with nothing to lose. Right, right. So yeah. saying, we see we, that, that's my point. We yeah. go back to we go, we see his family, we see his kids. And I, I get I get what you're saying because it starts off with Tim Robbins' character, but I mm -hmm. think it's about both of them, um, both their families. Hence it ends with the black family. You know, I you know think what I'm saying? I think I think the fact that like the scenes that we get when Tim Robbins is back at at Martin's house with his family. Because all of that is so good, 
It's really good. Like Martin is really good with his kids and you get to see this softer side of him. And uh, he's really good with his wife and, you know, grandma slapping the shit out of everybody. That's black Which, stuff. which was hella black. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim Robbins discovering that like he's got a, you know, he's got certificates in, you know, computer engineering mm-hmm. and da 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 da. Yeah. And he realizes he's kind of judged this guy the whole way. But I still feel like even through that, we're looking at this movie, we're looking at everything through the eyes of a white man. Right? Like, you know, like this movie is through the eyes of a white man. So it's like, well shit, if this is a blackbuster, then Glory is a blackbuster. Right? Like, you know, because I mean, think about it. You got Denzel, you got Morgan Freeman, right? Like, you know, you got Andre Braun, you got all of these, you know, they're talking about black mm-hmm. people's stuff. <laughs> like it's the Civil War, it's the all black regimen, right? Like, even though it's told through Colonel Shaw's perspective, Glory would under this criteria qualify. Now, now what's the big X factor hmm. is rush hour, right? Uh-huh. Because Rush Hour is a the movie's about Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's, you know, fight to get the, the girl back and how he partners with Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker is just so amazing, you know what I mean, that like he kind of steals the show. But this movie is not about black people, it's about Asian people, an Asian cop specifically, you know, uh-huh. fighting to like get the unkidnapped. So does that make it a blackbuster movie? Just simply having the black actor given an outstanding performance in a supporting role in a movie that isn't centered on blackness, mm. does that mean that that's a blackbuster? Uh, I get, I get, I get your question, man, mm-hmm. and that's I feel like that might be an answer that can be successfully answered. It might be case yeah. by case basis. Yeah, because I'm thinking about if that's the, like money talks. The objective was. It was there was a uh, um a uh, a breakup. I mean a break um uh, a prison break, mm-hmm. a jail break. Yeah, that uh, Chris Tucker was involved in mm-hmm. his character, and that wasn't he. He was just that was that was on some. The guy was a Russian or French, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. sort of you know. So he just got, he got caught up in that so, classic nineties. And so now the police are after these two people. Like mm-hmm. it's not it, it's not a black film either. Outside of him going showing where he's from. Right. Showing his neighborhood briefly, um, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's just I feel like Tim Robbins, Jackie Chan, mm-hmm. and uh, Charlie Sheen are in the movie. Yeah, let's make it let's make it black by putting Martin mm-hmm. Chris Tucker in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I feel like it, if 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 it was Jackie Chan and and, um, and uh, what's his name Luke Luke Wilson mm-hmm. or Owen Wilson? Yeah. It's still funny. It probably do big too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, but it's not nowhere near a black film. Right. You wouldn't even you, you wouldn't even consider it. But like the I, fact that yeah, it's I feel like the actors. I feel like those particular actors are so black. You That's know the point. That's the. I mean, I think once when the actor brings the culture with them. Yes. In the way mm-hmm. that like Chris Tucker and Martin Lawrence did. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting is is that. As we continue down the Martin kind of path, a lot of these to me start to become like coin flips on like, mm. like we'll have this conversation again, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when we get to Blue Streak, for example, yeah. right? If the same questions will present themselves, except in this particular case, the movie is all about Martin Lawrence, mm-hmm. right? He's the star. But here's the thing mm-hmm. don't it feel the same? They feel the same. Yeah. I mean, like, like I have to watch it again. I haven't seen Blue Streak in years. Mm-hmm. We'll, right? we'll do that soon. But, like, a lot of, like, if you start looking at a lot of the movies Martin starts to do, they all start to feel a little like nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, they're all that type of movie. Aside from life, and, of course, the Bad Boys franchises, was there anything that Martin did that was... And I'm talking about like star power. I'm not talking about a thin line. I'm not talking like those movies are established, but mm-hmm. like all of these movies kind of come after a thin line, right? Right? Like you know the the buddy comedies that he, he started starts doing to do, more Hollywood stuff, Black Knight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, so we got Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Boom. That's a black movie for sure. 
So yeah, so I think he's I think he's he starts to bounce back and forth, but he's got an interesting I career. That, arc. I think that's very that's very similar of most black. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. Chris Tucker went from Friday to Fifth Element. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Outside the Dead Presidents and Friday, um, Money Talks closest. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Money Talks is right around that coin flip era. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he did his, uh the Fifth Ele- Fifth Element, Rush Hour One, Two, Three. Mm-hmm. Like those are when you get to Hollywood, that's you do you're doing those big type of films. Once where, you cross where over like that, yeah. Where where the kind of film you're in mm-hmm. is that could have easily been the white guy. Hundred percent. Terrence uh, T in in nothing to lose could be could be Owen Wilson. Hundred percent. Or uh you know what I'm saying? Early Mark Wahlberg. Yes. You right. know what I'm saying? Like Right. So that's what I mean. Same thing with uh with um Rush Hour. Rush Hour could have been mm-hmm. uh Adam Sandler. Yeah. You know what I mean? Perfect. You know what I mean? So Perfect. I feel like most most black um, actors eventually go from doing movies like The Fridays and doing mm-hmm. movies like uh, House Party mm-hmm. to like getting and being doing buddy cop films with uh yeah you know what I'm saying with a white guy or an Asian guy. Chris Rock had a similar arc. Yeah, Bad right? Company. Like, he went from yeah he started the, doing you know very black Pootie Tang, <laughs> right? Pootie Tang. Very black movies yeah. too. You know that type of. Um, was Beverly Hill Ninja? Was that him? No. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Where he like changes. It was like one of those switcheroo type of things. Bad Company. Was it well, Adam, what, Anthony Hopkins. Not with Anthony Hopkins. It's like uh, a, it was a comedy where he goes to heaven or somebody comes back as, oh, a, as a as a black. I, I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. But it, it's familiar, right? I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, yeah. So I like, can't remember, I can't think of it right now. But, but all of those like kind of like comedy stars have the same kind of arc, mm-hmm. and so like as we, I mean, we've got Kevin Hart went from uh, Paper Soldiers. Kevin Hart's another example. So yeah, Kevin, like, like, oh, this is a such a, a hot Friday take. next Friday to uh, all about the Benjamins. This is a hot take. This yeah, because like Chris, uh, Chris uh, we got Boys in the Hood, Higher yeah. Learning, a Friday to yeah. Ice Cube doing like Triple uh, X. This and is, um, all about the, you know what I'm saying. So like, eventually, you gonna go, you gonna go kind of like coin flippers. You gonna about go, about half of, oh man, we really got to write this shit down. Because about uh-huh. half of Kevin Hart's movies to me aren't blackbusters. Oof. About half. Okay. Like the ride along that he did with. Yeah, it has to. That two, has two to be. Leads. I mean, it's him is cute, but like none of the stuff that he did with The Rock. Feels like a blackbuster. Jumanji for sure ain't. Jumanji for sure isn't. Nah. And then he did one where like like uh, the Rock is like a like a secret yeah, yeah. agent, some central intelligence. Yeah, you know yes, yeah, so, yeah. But that's not a blackbuster. <laughs> Even though they both black. Even though they both black. <laughs> <laughs> right? Man, that's right, not right, a right, blackbuster, right. right? Nah. So like, yeah. But I wonder. I, I would have loved to say if, but if it if it was the Rock and and uh, Martin Lawrence mm-hmm. or the Rock and Eddie Murphy, or the Rocky, and uh, Mike Epps. So, what does that say about what does that say about Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart is black. He's a nigga for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, but, but in his movies, movies also went. Yeah, um, the shit he did with Wesley Snipes that showed that showed me that he could still do. He's still him. Yeah, but his movies, he did his blackness is kind of kind of like watered down. He just like. Kevin Hart's about that bread. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We're not disparaging. I'm not mad at him. But yeah. like, but from a movie standpoint, he do, he goes for big, buster, crossover mm-hmm. type films, because I think in a way, the era that we're talking about with these '90s movies right. is over. Yeah, unfortunately, it man. doesn't exist. Like you yeah. can't like all that's left is the type of stuff that like Kevin Hart does. Mm-hmm. That's all. That, or, or Tyler. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all that's left, right? Because mm-hmm. this movie doesn't get made, which goes to my second. To your second take. I take. Uh huh. Which is why are these movies? When you think about it. Oh man. When you think about it, all of like damn near all of the movies that we've covered on Blackbusters, I watched on DVD the first time I saw it. Mm. Right? Yeah. Damn near all. There's a handful that I saw in the theater when they came out. Oh, really? Just a handful, right? Like, I remember seeing, I saw Boys in the Hood in the theater. Mm -hmm. Um, Menace? Menace, I saw on DVD first. Really? Yeah, I didn't see it in the theater. Um, Mm -hmm. Woo, DVD. Uh Uh-huh. You know, Juice, DVD. Oh, shit. You know, um, damn near, like a lot of the- But is that, oh, you know what? 
part of it is age when and it came too. out. Me too, honestly, because I, I, you're saying that because of the age, because not age. because of like the lack of like star power of the movie. No, 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 no. Okay, good. I'm same here. My mom would, my mom wouldn't let me go see Boys in the Hood. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think the first I was one, the first time I started ago, going 10. to the movies by myself, there was a discount like theater in Pasadena. I saw the five heartbeats like maybe. 25 times like at that theater right. because you could literally catch the bus and just chill and I would just hop from from the the, the from the theater that was playing Five Heartbeats to the one that was playing Home Alone and I literally would bounce back mm-hmm. and forth but I think the first movie I remember going to see like by myself was like Bad Boys that's funny right like you what know what year is that 95 that was like 90, 95 96. 96 my first movie I remember it felt weird because my dad was dropping me off with yeah. my partner my boy Will Moreland shout out mm-hmm. to my boy my nigga Baby, baby. <laughs> Inside joke. Uh, the homie Will Moreland, man, he dropped us off. We was in the 10th grade to go see Don't Be a Menace or Drinking the Gin and Juice yeah. in the Hood. Yeah. He dropped us off at the, at the movie's theater. Um, I think he had to pay for our tickets. Because mm-hmm. it was like PG-17 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that one had to be R. Yeah. Uh, might have been. Yeah, been it, was, yeah. it was smashing in the, yeah. in the credits, yeah. opening yeah. credits. Yeah. My dad was a real one. He paid for our tickets, mm-hmm. and then he and he got in his car and drove off. I'll see y'all in the two hours. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, that's the and I, since then I started going to the movies by myself yeah. without my parents. My aunt took me to see. My aunt was probably why I have like all of this like cinephile like blood in me because she took like I saw Last Dragon in the theater. Okay, like at 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 the Egyptian in Hollywood, mm-hmm. right? Like I saw um, Lean on Me at Man mm-hmm. Chinese, right? So like you got to do Lean on Me. Yeah, soon. whenever whenever mm-hmm. something black came out, she would take me to see. So I saw a lot of that stuff there. But I think that Hollywood made all of these movies. This mm-hmm. is my theory, and you told me if you agree. Hollywood was making all of these movies, mm-hmm. giving these opportunities to Martin Lawrence and Chris Tucker for these very like studio, you know, very film school, you know, mm-hmm. very you know, simple plotted films because they knew that they would make their money if not on the box office, they'd make it in. Rentals mm-hmm. and DVD sales, right, right. So all of these movies were profitable, right, by by Hollywood standards, which is why we got so many of them. Once the DVD market fell off, mm. the studios stopped green lighting these type of films because there was no guarantee that they were going to make their money back. That sounds that might be right, bro. Right, um. and I think the consequence of that is. This whole new crop of very funny people who I think are just as creative as, like, I think that that there should, if Hollywood had stayed the same, there'd be an army of, like, DJ Pooh acolytes that all get to have movies greenlit and made mm-hmm. in, in Hollywood, right? Right. But because Hollywood stopped greenlighting these films, talented directors and actors like yourself and others that have been on this show... The the there's no platform there, right? Right. So yeah. then it goes to what you you know what what you and others have done, which is evolved into um, what we see on the net. But what's missing is that that galvanizing glue, yeah, that we all had, like you know, because mm-hmm. we all remember seeing these movies, and it's the commonality around these movies that put them in this in the esteem that mm-hmm. they are now. Yeah, that's my that's my theory that like once once. These movies, like I remember, I remember seeing nothing to lose, and damn near everybody's DVD case. Remember, mm-hmm. you going up somebody's crib, yeah. somebody living room, it'd be their DVD case. Oh, yeah. they go, I remember seeing this everywhere. You go, to the, you go through the, the whole little mm-hmm. the alphabetical order. If you was really, yep. if you had Every, a, a gang of them. Yep. Yeah, uh, or the or the book, mm-hmm. the booklet, the big ass photo, the, mm-hmm. the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all that, man. So, like when that went away. I think Hollywood stopped making these movies because of DVD sales. Because they stopped really doing the DVD thing. That, like once they went to streaming. Once we went to streaming, like once like 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 I remember like if you go back to this era, there are some times where I would buy a DVD for a movie that I had never even seen. Mm-hmm. I just knew that Chris Tucker was in it, right? Or Martin was in it, yeah. So I'd spend the fifteen ninety nine or mm-hmm. whatever to buy the DVD. Yeah, there were a lot of people that went and saw the movie in theater and mm-hmm. then purchased the, the DVD because that was the only way to watch it again, again. if you ever wanted to watch it again, All right. right? Or wait for it to come on HBO, or wait for it to come on BET with the right. uh, with the bad with, uh, the, with the bad dub, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So because the resale market dropped out. 
this is like the last kind of like like the last graduating class of so of, it, it of sounds movie like, stars. Yeah, movie stars. Um, so now it's gonna go back. Now I feel like it's going to like they're having dope ass movies on streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. So uh, things will go straight to HBO or Max, yeah, or uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime and. Uh, Paramount, mm-hmm. so th- they'll start coming out like that, and then the theaters. I mean, I, I still go to the. Th- I still go to yeah, the theater. I still go to the theater for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, all the time, me and the missus. Uh, but it's never packed unless it's like a, you know, M- Marvel, Marvel Brothers, movies, a Marvel film. Yeah, some huge, it might be yeah. packed for like that day or yeah. that weekend. And those are the only movies that kind of make now, right? They it's only weird. make things they that they, they don't make movies like. Nothing to lose. When's the last time you seen something like this? That's what I'm saying. Like when I was thinking about this movie job, I was thinking like, okay, you've got this class of of performers: mm-hmm. Chris Tucker, Martin, Chris Rock, right? And then like it goes cold, and I'm like looking for like where it picks back up, where like black comedians that make the jump into movie stars. And I feel like there's this just on, this man. this gap oh, of I don't know who came after them. That's a, so here we so that's the question. That's a good question. Cause my age, I'm 40. I'm 41, mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. 41, man. And I feel like I started doing comedy when I was late 20. So mm-hmm. I was about 27, mm-hmm. 28. Um and I also was an actor too. Yeah. I I I got an agent in 09 and uh it's just that I have, to, I have to ask myself, who are the and all the the Martins are fifty something mm-hmm. now. The uh the um Chris Tucker, I'm assuming he's damn near fifty as well, if mm-hmm. not forty eight, forty nine, fifty. Yeah. Um, and he's Tommy Davidson, the Jamie Foxes is they're fifty. Yes. So who are but when he made Booty Call, when they made Friday, they mm-hmm. were in their twenties. Yes. Their early twenties. Yes. So who are the guys now? And me being a comedian, me knowing a lot of black comedians around LA mm-hmm. and even outside of LA, um, just in general, just having a knowledge of all these all these comedians out there. Mm-hmm. Where are where's the generational talent? Now I see a lot of stand up comics comics that I think are funny as hell. Amazingly right, funny. You know what I'm saying? But amazingly but funny. movie stars. Yeah. I don't know, man. See, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Like to me, like, and again. Like, I say this from a bigger picture standpoint, right? right? You know the respect and mm-hmm. admiration that, that I have for you. Appreciate it. Like, you should be a movie star. Mm-hmm. Tony Baker should be a movie star. Yeah. Kevin on stage should be a movie star, mm-hmm. right? Like, like these are the guys that I, that I find to be the funniest, right? right. But right. you're right. Like, as I start going down, like, okay, it was a uh, homeboy brother used to hang out with uh, – did a lot of those those off brand comedies, forty year forty year old virgin Craig oh, yeah. Craig Robinson. Uh, yes, Craig Robinson. Yes. So so he made the jump, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Hannibal Barris did did some stuff, right? But yeah, I would say Hannibal. I I, I, I loved him as a comic. Not mm-hmm. loved. I still love him as a comic. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't consider him an actor like that to yeah. where, but he's so, done movies like you yeah, like yeah, you yeah. see him in stuff every yeah. now and then. But there should be a whole. There and should there be a is. whole roster of like thirty year old and forty year old comics that are making movies that I just don't see it happening. There should be there should be a, a comedian that is the age of Michael B. Jordan. Yes, that's a star. That's a star, um, and there should be a couple of them. It, is, it should be <laughs> right. Yeah, it should be a couple all of them. The, all these Dave Chappelle's. He's late forties. Mm-hmm. All the uh, Eddie Griffins, fifty something. Think about all like, the think about all that talent. And where are they now? Where was where is the? And I know some funny dudes. I feel like I feel like Hollywood stopped paying attention, or they stopped. Like for example, if you think about it, all the guys we're talking about, the generational talents, were a lot of them were uh, were birthed and exposed by mm-hmm. Wayne's brothers. True. By by Keenan Ivy Wayne's. Mm-hmm. By Ice Cube. Yep. Ice Cube put on Chris Tucker. He put on Mike Epps. Mm-hmm. He put on um uh a Cat Williams. Yep. Yep. He put on. Um and with the Martin show, the Tracy Morgans, um, so like, but they, to me, they all come from that same class. Yeah, they're all from that fifty That's year old what I'm class. Now like, all, all these guys are or between fifty, yeah. and fifty five. Like even like a Bill Bellamy, yeah, is, is still 
you know, probably a year or two off of Cedric the Entertainer. Right, right, in right. In terms of age. Yeah. Right, in terms of Mike Epps. So the the next group of people... Um, it just disappears. I think because the movie... The, they can't be movie stars because... Or we can't be movie stars because those movies have disappeared. Which which goes back so, to my DVD theory. Because like someone like... I, I, I see Chris Tucker and I see a DC Young Fly. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if DC Young Fly can do... He's funny, super funny, mm -hmm. and he's doing he's doing great with eighty five South Show, and mm -hmm. he did great on the Wild and Out Show. Um, can he can he do a rush hour? But see, but here's here's what's so important. This is a beautiful conversation, and 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 this is all of the thoughts that I had just watching this this, this movie is because all of those guys got a chance to get better. Mm -hmm. You know this from playing college football, right? right? If you don't get reps in practice. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you, you can't get, get on the field. Right. If you don't get rest right. practice, you can't get better, which means you can't get yeah, on the field, mm -hmm. which means that you can't, right. you know, have you can't the, thrive. Have, you have can't, a tape to yeah. maybe be able to get, get drafted to the league, to the league right? right? Exactly. So if you look at all of these movies that Martin did and Chris Tucker did and all of these other, from low budget to big budget, they had an opportunity to grow and get better as actors mm -hmm. because right. they continue to have opportunities to kind of work, right. right? So if no movies are being made, a DC Young, young Fly can't evolve to where he is now. Kevin Hart was like maybe the last one through the door. Yeah. From like Paper Soldiers to mm -hmm. like that bit little piece in like 40-Year-Old Virgin. Soul Plane. To Soul Plane. So he's getting opportunities to get better as an actor to ultimately get to the point where he is now. Right. But right now it's like there is no runway. There's I, no on-ramp uh, for all that creative for talent. For comedic movie stars. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with somebody uh, last week and he said that TV, movie, TV and comedy is thriving, mm -hmm. doing their thing. But movie and comedy isn't. Yeah. Even even with white people, white and black mm -hmm. uh, um, comedies aren't doing well. Yeah. Or aren't even being made. So a lot of times, uh, the DC Young Fly probably would have gotten his own movie already mm -hmm. if they were those if com if, of black comedy movies were being made. Yeah. Uh, the Desi Bankses and um, yeah, Dorito Brown, all of these guys. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we've had we we've had that. Is you? I want to call them generational talents as well, mm -hmm. but um, the, we got to see them in the movies first to see if, it, if yeah. they're generational talents because these movies have to work. Chris Tucker was in the, I don't think he was even twenty five yet when he did Friday. I talked and to it a, worked. I talked to a buddy of mine who's an exec at BT, like BT Plus. And I was like, man, if you guys would just, like, you know, like how the old Hollywood studios used to sign, they used to sign actors, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, like, everybody knows Eddie Murphy's famous, you know, 10 picture 10 deal. Million, yeah, 10 million a picture deal. That he did with Paramount, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you would sign these guys. Paramount Disney. Paramount. Oh, so like his like the first like all of those early movies mm -hmm. Beverly Hills Cop. Da, oh, da, da, da. you talking about Paramount then? Paramount Pictures, yeah. Eddie, oh. Eddie signed a deal with Paramount. Oh, okay, that was his yeah. first deal. Like mm -hmm. they locked him up for yeah. like you know it, like now by the time he got to the end of it he started doing Norbit and shit like that. Yeah, to try to get out, but that's beside the point. Um, like if if BET or one of these studios. To be somebody decides like, listen, we're going to invest in this talent. And we're not going to force them to hit a home run mm -hmm. at their first at bat. Right. Right. We're going to put them with directors and writers and innovators. Like, I think in like four years, you could have this. We, yeah, we, this we definitely class, We definitely you know, have it. Of, of people. And um, I feel like that's where I come in. Oh, even with, over the last six years with my content, it, it hasn't been movies or TV shows, it's mm -hmm. been sketches and on social media sketches. But I feel like the. Um, the response has been the same. Yeah. When it comes to uh, the stuff, I'm very influenced by the Martins and the Jamie Foxes and the Eddie Murphys and the Richard Pryor. So when you see my content, it kind of brings people back to that. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, I, that's what I try to do. Um, now I just got to uh, get to the point where I'm making these films. Yeah. And bring that black comedy, hood good comedy back. People love you, know you for it. I appreciate it, man. And that's, yeah. that's the goal. So that's what we, and I feel like I agree with you on why. That kind that that movie stopped being made. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that we got to find a way. Even even if it's I right, I would my goal was to become a filmmaker and have my films be uh, debuted and premiered and mm -hmm. screened all through all through the country on in movie theaters. Mm -hmm. 
But that was shit years ago when I I, I went to college twenty years ago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I wanted to uh, learn how to make films so I could be in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Now twenty years later, the theaters are like a dying breed, still so living, interesting. yeah, but it's dying. It's like from two movie lovers. Yeah, that part is hard, right? Like yeah. you know. So now I feel like I have. So screen only streaming the Netflix is the, the mm-hmm. going straight to Max, going straight to stars mm-hmm. uh as a, as an option. Now. Because what's weird is is because Hollywood in a way still makes its stars on the silver screen. Mm-hmm. Right? Despite the fact that like theaters or you know, movies or but stars are still made in movies in a in a way that that they're not really made on TV. Right. right. I give you an example, like Idris Elba, right? Star of the Wire, but it wasn't until he started doing movies, right, that he became this motherfucker might be 007 one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. like you know, he's the British Denzel. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, with streaming, there's so much stuff. It's easy for a great series. To get lost, to get lost in bro. in the in, a great, a, or a great one hour and twenty minute film to just get lost. When this came out, it came out in twenty yeah. twenty because it's just a thumbnail, mm-hmm. right? And then again, applauding all content creators, but some of the shit is hit and miss. Yeah. Like I've I've clicked on some shit and been like, yeah, okay, like you know, mm-hmm. this this is a one black fist, a two black fist, I'm glad right. you made it or whatever. Right. So it's interesting. So like as I was watching, like taking it back to, you know, nothing to lose, I just found myself um missing the era. Yeah. You know, yeah. the movie is what it is, right? right? Like, you know, like I got some MVPs, I got, you know, I, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna do that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as I was watching it, you know, watching Martin Cook and thinking about the films, I started thinking about the other films that we're gonna cover, and then like I just ran out of movies. Like at a certain point, it was just like, damn. Did we run out? Yeah. It's going to take us a while to run out. It's going to take us a, a while. There's a lot of movies. It's a lot of movies. And but there's yeah. still a lot of movies that were made. But then we we get into that. Like, eventually, we'll get to the point where we'll be like, Rush Hour? Are we doing Rush Hour? Yeah. Or, you know, we'll get to the point where we'll be like, um, Ride Along? Like, are we doing Ride Along? Right? Like, and mm-hmm. we'll have to make those debates because yeah. these quote unquote true blackbusters. Mm-hmm. After the nineties, and I don't know when it starts to dry up, but it starts to the dry first up five, a little bit. Five to seven years of the two thousand. Yeah. Maybe even before that, two thousand five, seven. Mm-hmm. Eesh. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, nothing to lose was a good film. I dug it. I, I know we didn't we didn't go all the way through as far as talk about the every scene, which mm-hmm. I, I'm stopping to do. I'm not gonna do that no more. Yeah. Um, it was a good film, and I loved how they organically I feel brought these two characters together mm-hmm. to, to kind of find some respect there. Yeah. Um, because it, it, in it, it's, you might think it's unrealistic for the guy that end up, the guy tried to rob a dude and then they end up being friends within, within 30 hours later. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on what they go through. Imagine being robbed by a guy with no gun, no bullets in his gun. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's just trying to scare you, really. So you realize, okay, he wasn't. He's not a killer. Yeah, he's a thief and a loser, mm-hmm. but he's not a killer. I don't like him though. Right. But I done drove all the way out here to um to Arizona, and I don't have no money to get back for gas because mm-hmm. I threw my wallet out mm-hmm. and my phone. Mm-hmm. So now I can't call anybody. Yeah. And he has a couple dollars. And so they find themselves in the pickle. He finds himself in the pickle and almost relying on him to get back. At that time, Martin is his only friend in the world. At that time. Yeah. You know, I like at, at that particular time, mm-hmm. when we talked about, you talked about it earlier, you described it well, how his whole life had been turned upside down. At that point, Martin's character, as flawed as he is, is his only friend. And their conversation is like two differing friends would have. And that's why I like the film. I yeah. like the writing too. It was like he ends up being. The guy he confides in. They have perspective. Right. I would have done this. I would have done, done that. Yeah. I, you know, when when he starts, when when Tim Robbins' character starts to kind of like assert himself a little bit, like when he does the the accidental robbery at the at the at the yeah. gas station, mm-hmm. and the Martin kind of big him up, like, okay, okay look, I see you, I see. <laughs> right? You know, I be. Yeah. So so it's it's a great road comedy. 
Mm-hmm. And 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 the vast majority of the movie is them on the road. On the road. Road comedy. Figuring it out. Figuring it out. You know, and trying to get back. Knowing, not knowingly becoming friends. On accident. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And then he realizes through his venting that I'm a rob. Mm-hmm. I'm a rob my, my my boss. Yeah. And of course Martin is wife. all is, and Martin is all into it. Yeah, how much you think you can get? Mm-hmm. What? I'm in. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. And so then they then they come across uh they come across some real bank robbers or some real thieves yeah. and real jackers and yeah. burglars that are basically trying to compete <laughs> with them about turf. Our, this, our turf. Yeah. And so and then it gets into a whole wild and crazy ride where they follow them. They they follow them to the heist. Mm-hmm. The, the bad guys follow Tim Robbins and Martin to the heist mm-hmm. and and basically intercept the bread. So they actually at the do, hotel. At the hotel. And it's like mm-hmm. um out of smash Rebecca Gayhart. What'd you have? I would have smashed. I mean, at but that point, felt I, bad. But at that point, he didn't know that. True. At he that point, that he, he thought of his wife. But at that point, here's the thing: some people feel like when you get your heart broken, let's let, let, let's ask the yeah. let's ask the family. Like when you are faithful to your mate, whether you're a woman or man, you are faithful to your mate, and you find out your mate cheats on you. Of course, you're angry, and it anger to the point where you mad, and now now you about to be like an eye for an eye. Mm-hmm. Or a box for a box, a mattress yeah. for a mattress, <laughs> or or you just say you you might want to go uh, get even by yeah. smashing somebody else, but you really don't want that in the first place. He don't he don't want to smash another woman, and he's just upset that his wife is smashing somebody else. He don't want to get even, and you know that smash wasn't his style. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like like it wasn't like. She was hella aggressive. Uh-huh. She was dr- she was on some young girl shit. Yeah, which is what he wasn't. Right, put the music on. Yeah, some hip hop shit, low key, mm-hmm. and then a little a little strip tease. Mm-hmm. That ain't what he was used to. That's even like if he was a young unmarried man, he might have like found a way to get out of that. Yeah, because that just wasn't his speed. Right, um, he's square. Yeah, I mean for for those that haven't watched it, the the big reveal mm-hmm. is that. It wasn't his wife. It wasn't his wife. Smashing. It was her sister. And imagine having your sister that looked just like your wife. Mm-hmm. Your, your sister-in-law, the same red hair. Yeah. They sister. They probably are two years apart. She's a scumbag. The sister. But hey, hey, listen, <laughs> let's get to this. Let's get to this. And the husband or the boyfriend yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I wish you would. <laughs> I know exactly where you're going with yeah. this, man. So you got your sister coming in town. Your, your big sister gives you the key uh-huh. because they're going to be at work. So you can come to their house and you're going to smash your boyfriend in they bed. In they bed. The disrespect. The disrespect, the bro. Disrespect. That's a big ass house. That, yes. I know they got a guest room. So many other. Uh, wh- obviously, where was where were you going to sleep? Right. You know what I mean? Like, where you were, you? <laughs> the four of y'all wasn't going to be in this bed. Right. You had a guest room. You should. Even if you was gonna smash, smash on the couch. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I wish in the writing they would have switched up. Yeah. They could have, because I don't. Th- I don't see the sister doing that. Here's the thing: if mm-hmm. I go, if if me and my wife go to her sister's house, mm-hmm. and and she's like, "Hey, uh, we're staying. We're staying the weekend, mm-hmm. but then I hear that she gave me the key to go in, and we as soon as we get back, you know, me and my me and my wife, when we we do we road trip. By the time we mm-hmm. get to wherever we going, we ready to get it cracking. Yeah, yeah. Something about something about road trip do mm-hmm. something for us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That so time. I want to knock her down. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna knock her down. In her sister's bed, where she sleeps with her husband, we're not gonna climb all the way up the stairs, nah. and 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 fuck in the same spot of the bed. The baby, with that they be <laughs> the, the, the sheets ain't clean. Yeah, the the guest room sheets yeah. are clean. Yeah, now saying that they, what they should have did was they should he should have heard some some moaning upstairs, mm-hmm. and he went upstairs mm-hmm. and he passed the his own master bedroom, yeah. and he saw his wife still mm-hmm. in the guest room smashing, yeah, smashing in her mind, in his mind, mm-hmm. in somewhere in the. In the in, in the scene where he he came to her, mm-hmm. you know, on the phone, he was like, "Hey, I, I saw you. Yeah. What you mean? I saw you saw me. I saw you saw me. What? I saw you with with my boss. Mm-hmm. I saw you with PB in the guest in the, in the guest bedroom. So I guess you. I guess it, um you you wanted to. Uh, I guess you wanted to not be too much of a scumbag by not smashing him in, in our bed. Yeah. So you took him to the guest bedroom. Right. That that can make sense. You're like, why would I go to the guest bedroom? Yeah. That's my yeah. sister. Yeah. Hence them in the guest bedroom. They were our guests. Right. That. But the fact that the sister. 
was in the bed. I don't, I don't see, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I mean, like, like unless it's a one bedroom house, a one bedroom apartment. I mean, we don't come from that world. Like, you know, we got to talk to some of our white brothers and sisters. Yeah, maybe that's the entitlement. Maybe yeah. that's the, well, you know, I'm, I'm your guest, so I guess <laughs> I can sleep in the master bedroom. I mean, dude, yeah, we I'm always just... fucking our. <laughs> we, we always we, we always travel the country to our friend's yeah. house and then fucking their, yeah, ma- their master bro- bedroom. Everybody, nobody fucks in a guest room. No like, way. Like, what are you doing? Like, nah, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, so, so all in all, he found out that his wife. The mm-hmm. whole the whole movie starts. The drama starts when he finds out his mm-hmm. wife cheated on him yep. with his boss, and now his life is over. Mm-hmm. To at the, like the what the last twenty minutes of the film, yeah, he realizes that his wife didn't cheat on him. Mm-hmm. Um, and in between that time, they go in, they they execute the heist. Okay. He goes back to his, his, the plan, the corporate building where he works yeah, at. Yeah, and then. Has this moment where he takes the mask off and you know looks you know looks in the camera. He's so angry with his boss. So angry he can't his his ego and his and his ego is so bruised that he wants to let you. Yeah, I'm the one that stole from you. I'm mm-hmm. the one that robbed you. Uh, at first they had masks on so they can you know, hide their hide their identity. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, of course. Yep. The cameras are everywhere. He's flipping the camera off, even though he got the same business suit on he had on mm-hmm. the, day, the, the day before. So of course, even if he had a mask on, yeah. you still know it's, it's the same fucking, guy. It's smoking. It's, it's Mr. Bean. It's just you, bro. <laughs> right, right. But Nick Bean. for movie, or uh, for yeah, Nick Bean, mm-hmm. for, for movie purposes, that ski mask was going to help him. Yeah. Uh, not not tell people who he was, yeah. and then he eventually took the mask off because he got frustrated, mm-hmm. and he was basically showing, he needed I him did, to know. I did, this I did to this to you on some Mister Big shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which, which under the circumstances, I understand, and probably was his plan all along, right? Like you know, I think that like maybe like when he when he saw like the like the dick statue, mm-hmm. and it was just a, like you know, like I need you to know that like I didn't let you get away. With you smashing my smashing wife. Smashing my wife. But this is what happens when you smash my I wife. I did that. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I'm not a punk, you know, da 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 And ultimately, so then after that, they go back to the hotel, they count the money, the real robbers show up. Uh, Nick doesn't fuck Rebecca Gayhart, calls yeah. home, finds out it wasn't. Now they're in a jam. And because now he realizes all the stuff I just did to, my, to, the, done. to the company mm-hmm. and to my boss is for not because. Yeah. My boss is innocent. Right. Now he's got to try to return the money. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, Martin's character does him a solid. He doesn't realize this, erases the tape, you yep. know, saves this man's life. And then and ultimately, Nick tries to do him a favor, showing up at the barbecue and saying, like, you know, I got a, I got a job for you. Yeah. I got a role for you. You know, mm-hmm. credits roll them. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. shout out to my sister, man, and her best friend Linda Smith. They in the background dancing. That's yeah. them. The, in the, the park. The girls dancing in the background. <laughs> hey, so real shout out. Shout out to my sister Jari, man. Yeah. She was a superstar before I was, man. She was mm-hmm. acting before I, I was, man. She's the if, if you watch the in the end credits or the, the last scenes at the park where they're yeah. having barbecue and you see two little teenage girls in the background dancing, yeah, that's doing them. like a little dance. My sister has like a green Jumpsuit on. That's her. Yeah, I don't be watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish you could have told me. Uh huh. Um, For sure. All right, so let's get to some some awards real quick. All right, let's do it, man. Who's the MVP of Ooh. Nothing to Lose? Mm. MVP of Nothing to Lose is. Ooh, PB. You think so? <laughs> I, I, I'm, it's, it's a heavy reach. Yeah, it's a hot take, but I'm trying to be creative in this one because. He's the he's the reason mm-hmm. why um, Tim Robbins was in that part of town to get jacked by Martin. Yeah, in the first place. Yeah, um, or it got to be PB, or it got to be the wife, because they're the they're the they're the engine that got this story going. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's my take. I think it's very easy to say Martin. Mm-hmm. Because to everything that you talked about, yeah, this movie could have been Tim Robbins and Adam Sandler, or Tim Robbins and Chris Farley, or Tim Robbins, any of that mm-hmm. SNL, you know, yeah. what I mean, crew. Uh, Martin really makes this movie. Mm-hmm. There's a movie. It's one of my guilty pleasures. It's a really bad movie, but I really love it, and I watch it like every year. It's a movie called House Guests mm-hmm. with Phil Hartman and Sinbad, mm-hmm. right? movie is hella corny, but it's one of those, like, every time I came home after school and, 
you know, turned on Cinemax or cable, it was on, so I watched it a lot. <laughs> this is. movie would have been like that movie would have been so so much better if Martin was in it. House Guest is not a blockbuster. Right. Even though it's yeah. even though it's the same setup. Yes, man. The same kind of setup as all of these movies. So I think that I'm still going to go with Martin as the MVP. Oh, I understand. Because the only reason why we're even talking about this movie and the laundry list of movies that we've seen and we love is because Martin was in it, which makes it a blockbuster. So mm-hmm. so Martin gets my vote. I get it, and uh, that, that's, that's that's definitely the the obvious one. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I agree. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. so he's so black, and he's such a huge uh, pillar in the black community, the black culture. Um, that him in the movie, if he wasn't house guest, it'd mm-hmm. be a blackbuster too. Yep. Um, now I feel like there's other movies that are for bar. It's still a coin flip because you have to talk about it. This is the mm-hmm. first time we ever questioned the movie being a blackbuster or not. Yeah. And some people, what do you guys think? Do y'all think that this that nothing to lose? A lot of uh, even people who love Martin probably haven't even seen this movie. Mm-hmm. This movie is because it's, it is a mixture. It's, it's a mixed film. Yeah, like, you know, like it's 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 to me it's it's equivalent to Money Talks, but I love the film. I think Tate Robbins, Tate, Tate Robbins did better than. Well, I'm, you didn't give you did not give him credit for it, but I think he did his thing in this too. I love Tim Robbins in yeah, this. Yeah, he did. Some I funny love Tim Robbins, there. and damn near everything I see him in. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's a really and and he does that real kind of pensive, soft spoken mm-hmm. role very well. But he's like six five, six. Yeah, six. like you know, you know what I'm saying? it was just to me it was like. It had like shades of Shawshank Redemption, even yes. though this movie was not nearly as good as Shawshank Redemption. Right, 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 of course. But like, just Tim Robbins is just always good like that. Uh-huh. Like he's always good like that. You and know who? Maybe because it's a stature, but mm-hmm. you know, and Tim Robbins is great. Mm-hmm. But what if Vince Vaughn was his character? That see, then it's a then it's. <laughs> Then it's then it's then it's even funnier, it's bro. Funnier, Chris uh, Vince Vaughn and, and and um and Martin Lawrence. <laughs> that's you yeah. laughing already. Yeah, that was, yeah. it would have been no disrespect to Tim Robbins, yeah, but, but I think he did a great job. But them jaw jacking at oh each other, oh my gosh, yeah, and, the, and the shit that Vince Vaughn would come up with, yeah. Um, oh man, but yeah, let's, let's let's continue because because it's interesting. Like if like if you look at at, at Martin, right? Like you know. So Martin's early career is like all black. Do the right thing, house party, talking dirty after dark, mm-hmm. house party two, boomerang, you so crazy, bad boys, a thin line. Mm-hmm. Then we have nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Then he does life. And then mm-hmm. there's Blue Streak, Big Mama's House, What's the Worst That Could Happen, Black Knight, National Security. Security, you know, Open Season, Wild Hogs, like, you know. Yeah. It, it gets very mainstream. It gets very goofy after yeah. that. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna keep it a hundred. Yeah, I but mean, so he works Martin. every year. But yeah, he I, like he he literally has a film that comes out almost once a year. I forgot about Wild Hogs. for the entire two thousand. What's the worst that can happen? That's Danny DeVito, right? Wild Hogs. Yeah. The, no, no, no. The worst, the worst, the worst that can happen. Danny Tr- DeVito. Tr- oh, so that's the one that we were talking about, where yeah. where he wakes up as a they have like a switcheroo. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Yeah. Wild, Danny DeVito, right? Yeah. Wild Hogs is 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 John Travolta, Tim Allen, William H Macy. Like now here's this the thing. is not a black bus. Here's the thing. I don't care how black Martin is, because it's so white. Yeah. Nah. That can't be it. Uh-uh. Right? Uh-uh. It's a, it'll be a case by case basis. So case by if you're case like, situation. yeah, man, we're gonna watch Wild Hogs. I'll be like, huh? Blackbuster? Blackbuster? That gotta be an episode. Well, we do not special episode. 9017. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Spin-off joints. Right. Um, who's your LVP? Ooh, LVP. LVP. Um the daughter. <laughs> His little girl, Martin's daughter. <laughs> he he could have just had he yeah. could have just had one child. That would have been perfect. Shorty Dubop. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Who played who you know who Played his his son yeah. on the sh- on the show. Right. You know Shorty Dubop. Sh- yeah, he was uh-huh. perfect. For me, my LVP was the laser security system. Um, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Worst because even when it was on, they still went through. Niggas was just walking well, through. Fuck out of <laughs> That laser, was, it was all show. Like that or, was the worst. Is it? It was worse. The laser security or the males, the maximum man security <sighs> that walked to the front of the building and they they stuck behind them. Yeah. Oh and man, that's all you need to do. Yeah, security was hella lax. <laughs> 
<laughs> that spot, right? He's unlocking the door yeah. at the bottom and doesn't yeah. see him right in front of him. Yeah. That yeah. was easiest heist ever. Um, any overacting award? Overacting. Uh Nah, every Martin. Of, but Martin's a, he, that's that's, a, that's his style. Martin's always ah, yeah. Ah, that's his that's his style. Maybe John C. McGinley, the 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 white goon. You think so? I mean, he was good. He was, yeah, he yeah. was good. Like if, if I have to give some, Martin is the obvious choice because Martin is always yeah. over the top. Yeah. Um, but it was but Martin's it's funny. It's it's uh-huh. why we're there. So you know, it's not over the top. But yeah, I mean, he always is gonna have a, a shot to get the award. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what about uh, Brother Esposito when he was like, "Yeah, uh, yeah, baby, come on now from in front of the car, come <laughs> on, baby, yeah." Um, I'm nitpicking at this point yeah. because I'm, I didn't have a problem with yeah. it, but I didn't yeah. notice it as I watched it. I was like, "Okay, yeah, he he he's laying on his hood, old school nigga talk." And, you know the, and the thing is, it it goes back to. You're right. <laughs> it goes mm-hmm. back to what we were saying about these actors having time to get them reps in. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, I always remember Giancarlo as being a good actor. Right. But even then, something that he did in that role in, in Nothing to Lose helped him further down the line. Uh-huh. You know, he had like he had an opportunity. Now we get to see him. He's a super established actor, right. but it's just like, yep. But he was goon number one. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and, and, and he just got over as legit. Yeah, right, uh-huh. right. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> he said, "Where are you from?" He said, "London." <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's get let's get to some fists. Nothing right. to lose. Ooh. Nothing to lose. One to five fists. Where does this rank? One to five fish, nothing, nothing to lose. Uh, it gets a strong three. Strong three for you? Three fish. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to lose gets two. Ooh. Two. And the reason okay. being is for everything that we kind of talked about at the earlier part of the pod, which is like, I, like I'm still not 100% convinced that it's a blackbuster mm. and with it being a question mark on whether it is and we had a good legit debate about right. that right mm. and ultimately we kind of decided that it was but it like kind of like skin of its teeth right like mm-hmm. you know have to write an essay on graduation day to walk kind of kind of kind of situation right? right so for that like it gets a two and it's not a knock on it because it's not bad Ooh, that's that's below average <sighs> But it was funny. It was funny. It, uh, it was a good story. It was a cool little. I feel like how um, how the goons caught on on to him yeah. was realistic. Yeah, they were just driving down the street and they <clears> see. <throat> I thought it was weird to see Martin's with a shotgun mm-hmm. out in the open. Yeah, that's a white uh, man directed bad. that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's so. Uh, he's, right. he's he's playing with the shotgun at the gas station. It should be like he he had it on the side. He was trying to hide it. Yeah. But he, but they happened to peek and see. Yeah, no, they, oh, he, he was got just a standing shotgun. there with it. Yeah, so yeah. but to, but outside of that, that's a nitpick. It was a, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a nitpick, and they organically found these two guys mm-hmm. and think, oh, these guys are gonna rob stores yep. on our strip. Let's get these dudes. I'm going two right now, but as we approach the fiftieth episode, what I'm going to do is I want to go back and, and and remember what I gave threes to, mm-hmm. and then determine. If I think nothing to lose is as good as anything that I gave a three to. Mm-hmm. And then I reserve the right to bump it up to three yeah. based upon company. I don't mm-hmm. remember what I've given threes to. Yeah. And like the last two that, that I gave was New Jersey Drive, which which Oof. the East Coast was not feeling us for that. Um, yeah. And I, I and and this movie is actually better than New Jersey Drive. So I just like yes, my scale is, is all fucked up right it now. Is. It is. <laughs> I gotta figure out and, like what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of New Jersey Drive, bro. Yeah. I, I saw a comment. Um, I didn't respond to. I saw a comment though, trying to explain to me like the history of that time where they were robbing, they were robbing uh, cars, and mm-hmm. it was supposed to be like some some political or some rebellion towards uh, police brutality mm-hmm. and shit like that, and um, that they were stealing cars to 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 renegade and rebel against the police. I'm like, bro. Shut up, <laughs> do a, a picket uh, picket line or a picket fence 
Don't steal someone's hard earned car. Yes. Some innocent person's car. To protest. Because you got the a problem with yeah. Because the police don't got nothing to do with this person. Yeah. This woman is a nurse. Yeah. There's probably a single mom that is driving this this Saturn mm -hmm. to work every day. And you just rob the Saturn and take it because you mad at the police. Yeah. Come on, bro. If that's why if, if, if that's why y'all did it, I understand hood shit. I, mm -hmm. I'm from the hood. I get yeah. it. But understand, I'm also from the shit, and I get it, and it's, and it's stupid. It evidence. It was dumb. It, 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 it's the evidence of, of why the movie is a little bit flawed. Because if yeah. it was a part of something bigger, the movie did not convey that. Right. Right? Like, right. you know, like if, if it was attached to something bigger, like, you know, our West Coast bias, but, like, when we do hood gang movies or whatever— Everybody understands what's happening. Mm -hmm. They're fighting over territory. Yeah. They're fighting over turf. Right. This guy, oh, that guy's wearing red. This guy's wearing blue. Mm -hmm. So even if you're from another part of the country, the movie helps you understand why that guy just shot at that guy. Right. Right. <laughs> For, it's a bigger picture. It's a bigger picture. Even if it's even like even with Mendes, it was no bloods and crips, really, but it was right. like But you understood hood shit. why they was beefing. And right? yeah, and and stop and stop doing yeah. this hood shit because yeah. the hunt is on and you are the prey. We still have no idea why they were stealing cars. Now a lot of the guys in the comments were like, that was our culture. I get it. Yeah. I believe it. The movie just didn't. I'm not mad at them stealing cars. No, I'm just the the storyline, the character. Yeah. I didn't care nothing about the nigga. He didn't. He didn't have no personality. He yeah. wasn't. He looked after his sister a little bit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I would respect him for that. But like, he had a good mom at the crib. Yeah, it was just unseasoned. He, it just yeah. was an unseasoned. Yeah, you know, just needed. It's some, different. Needed and, some and, more Lowry's on it. Yeah, right. Like it just was an unseasoned just, movie. Yeah, yeah, right. And I get it. And and you know, for for the non silly comments. I understand, like, like a lot of people from that part of the country, like, that's their favorite movie. Like, they love that movie. I the, loved it, too, when I was a kid. Yeah. But as an adult, like... As a filmmaker. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't a filmmaker Give it a or a writer back then. But a from, from a writer's point of view, and you look at, like, character development and, like, the consistency of a character, mm -hmm. or, and, 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 like... It didn't make sense. Yeah. The nigga start crying when he finally got to jail and his mom, mm -hmm. him and his mom had a real heart to heart for the first time in the movie. Mm -hmm. And he's crying. He says, I feel like I left you, I let you down. And she yeah. said, No, no, you didn't let me down. Yeah. Nigga, it's you like, would for sure let her down. It's like me making a movie like with me and my niggas every day instead of going to school, like we break into Costco. <laughs> like every right. day mm -hmm. and then everybody goes to jail but we just can't stop breaking in the Costco <laughs> I gotta keep getting the motherfucking yeah man I, yeah. Just, I just like to get in there the man. trail mix man <laughs> I, I I know we went on the tangent and started talking about uh, New uh, New Jersey Drive again, but this was the No uh, Nothing to Lose yeah, podcast yeah, episode. That's great, man. Starring Tim Robbins and Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. um, I had a great time with this one. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was interesting because it is a coin flip. What y'all think, blackbuster or not? Mm -hmm. I think it's a blackbuster. This off the off the strength of Martin Lawrence being the mm -hmm. co lead. Yeah. Um, so I let me you know what your thoughts point. are. Yeah. Yeah. You had a great point too. So I think it's case by case. It's case by case for sure. Man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be thinking about Kevin Hart's movies. Yeah. For, for, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm no longer hot take tone. I, I said what I needed to say. So okay. I'm just a warm take tone. Okay. Warm yeah. take tone. I'm, you know. Okay. The the fact that we talked it through, you talked me off the ledge. You're a great therapist. I talked the temperature down. Yeah, talk the temperature down. Okay. A little right? bit. Right. Okay. So, uh, I'm just signing off. Warm, warm, warm take. Warm tank tone. <laughs> Warm's kind of like I feel like I need to pause. Like <laughs> like warm warm tank. <laughs> right? Pause indeed. Right. Like I'd much rather like I'd be I'd be hot take. I'd be cold take. But warm, warm feels take. a little like yeah, a little soft. Like <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all love. I was gonna let it ride. Play my flute. I was playing the flute. <laughs> Oh, hey man, man uh, this is our episode of uh, the Blackbusters, man. I'm your host, the Big Ja, mm -hmm. along with my co-host, um, Warm Take, a Warm Take <laughs> for, the, for now. Pause, <laughs> Warm Take tone, and uh, we'll see y'all next time, man. Um, you can jump in the comments, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, man. And share. Uh, let me know what y'all think about nothing to lose. Peace. We out. Pew to the max. Blackbusters.